first thing we do is review the log rule for integration. This says let u be a differentiable function of x. So the first part of this says the integral of 1 over x dx is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of x plus c. And this makes sense because the derivative of the natural log function is equal to 1 over x. Now, these are absolute value bars because the natural log function is only defined for all x greater than 0. Down here, part two, this says the integral of one over u du is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. So how is this different? Well, it's because u is a differentiable function of x, meaning that if your denominator is not just x like it is up here, but instead a function in terms of x, you can use u substitution and integrate this and still get that the integral of one over u du is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. Now let's quickly review some of the trig identities you learned in pre-calculus. We have our Pythagorean identities here. We have some even and odd identities. We have our double angle identities, half angle identities, and quotient identities. Now the most important ones that I need you to memorize would be these three Pythagorean identities to know which functions are even or odd. We talked about that in the previous few lessons. These two double angle identities and these two half angle identities. These are the ones that come up most often on the AP test. You need to have them memorized. You also need to make sure you have the derivatives of trig functions memorized. We talked about this early on in chapter two. Here are all the derivatives of our trig functions. Hopefully you already have these memorized. These will come in handy today when you're doing problems that are asking you to integrate certain trig functions. And if you think about what the derivative of certain trig functions are, it'll help you get your integral. Now let's look at the integrals of the six basic trig functions. So we already know a few of these. The integral of sine of u du is going to be equal to negative cosine of u plus c. And that makes sense because the derivative of this over here will give you sine of u. The integral of cosine of u du is going to be equal to sine of u plus c. And that makes sense because the derivative of this will give you this. The integral of tangent of u du is going to be equal to the negative natural log of the absolute value of cosine of u plus c. Or the natural log of the absolute value of secant of u plus c. Now you may be thinking, how can it be? equal to both of these well because if we think about our properties of logs if we have a number multiplied out front of a log we can take that number and make it the exponent of what we're taking the log of so technically the negative natural log of the absolute value of cosine of u plus c is equivalent to the natural log of the absolute value of cosine of u to the negative first power which is going to be the natural log of one over cosine of u plus c which is the natural log of secant of u plus c that's why these are equivalent we also know that the integral of cosecant of u du is equal to the negative negative natural log of the absolute value of cosecant of u plus cotangent of u plus c. The integral of secant of u du is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of secant of u plus tangent of u plus c. And the integral of cotangent of u du is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of sine of u plus c. You need to have each of these six integrals memorized. Did you know ants can swim? Me neither. It's exam time. Now example one this says find the indefinite integral. So here we're taking the integral of tangent of x dx. Now this is the integral of one of your six basic trig functions. So hopefully you have this memorized and this problem is over in three seconds. The integral of tangent of x dx is equal to the negative natural log of the absolute value of cosine of x plus c or the natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus c. Either of those would be acceptable for the answer here. But let's say you forgot what that integral was equal to. Well, what we can do is we can actually find the integral of this using u substitution. Now you say, how does that work? Well, tangent of x is equal to sine of x over cosine of x. And what I can do in this case, when I'm integrating a function being divided by another function, this rational function where I have a function in the numerator and denominator, I can use u substitution to set u equal to whichever function. If I were to take the derivative of it, would give me the other function. Now, it seems like in this question, you could substitute u in for sine of x or cosine of x, but you can't because let's say you were to substitute u in for sine of x. The derivative of that with respect to x is du dx is equal to cosine of x. Multiply both sides by dx, you get du is equal to cosine of x dx. But look up here, we have cosine of x in the denominator. So we can't do that because cosine of x would have to be in the numerator in order to substitute that in. So what we're going to do instead is set u equal to cosine of x. The reason is because if I take the derivative of this with respect to x, I get du dx is equal to negative sine of x. Multiply both sides by dx, I get du is equal to negative sine of x dx. And we look at the problem. Sine of x is in the numerator and then dx is there too so we can substitute in for that the only problem is we have this negative so what do i do with that well since there's no negative in the problem what i do is just divide it to the other side this is technically negative one times sine of x dx so i just divide both sides of this equation by negative one and now what i can do is rewrite this integral in terms of u and du i can substitute u in for cosine of x i can substitute negative du or negative one times du in for sine of x dx now all i have to do is just prepare this for integration by taking this negative one moving up 
out front of the integral sign and now i can integrate and i know the integral of one over u du by the log rule for integration is going to be the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c tack on that negative and now to finish this integral all i have to do is just take whatever i set u equal to which was cosine of x plug it back in for u here and i get that the integral of 10 x dx is equal to the negative natural log of the absolute value of cosine of x plus c just like we said in the beginning and remember you could technically write this also as the natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus c for the reason that we said earlier using the properties of logs now example two says find the indefinite integral so here we have the integral of sine squared x dx now if you recall there was no special integral for sine squared x dx so how do we do this well we need to find something to substitute in for sine squared x well if you recall that chart that we showed earlier with all of your pre-cal identities we remember a half angle identity that tells us sine squared x is actually equal to one half the quantity one minus cosine of two x now we can substitute that in for sine squared x and this is actually going to be much easier to integrate than this right here why because we can technically take this one half move it out front of the integral sign so now all we have to do is just integrate this and then tack on the one half at the end so how are we going to integrate this well technically we're going to integrate each term separately in here because it's a function with multiple terms but this cosine of 2x we have a function within a function anytime you have that and you are integrating you need to use u substitution so we're going to set u equal to our innermost function there which is going to be 2x we then take the derivative of that with respect to x and the derivative of u with respect to x is du dx derivative of 2x is just going to be 2 multiply both sides by dx you get du is going to be equal to 2 dx now we look at the problem we're going to be able to substitute that u in for the 2x we substitute du in for the dx but there is no 2 so what do we do with that 2 well when this occurs you divide that constant to the other side and we're going to have to substitute 1 half du in for the dx now let's go ahead and substitute so we're going to rewrite this integral in terms of u and du we said we're going to take u plug it in for 2x we're going to take 1 half du plug it in for dx now in order to evaluate this integral we got to prepare it for integration we still have a constant in here so that also needs to come out and multiply with this other one half that's out front then we're going to integrate each term separately in here the integral of 1 du is just going to be u plus c the integral of cosine of u du is going to be sine of u plus c the c's add together to create one constant of integration and the one halves multiply together to create one fourth we can then distribute that one fourth to the u to the sine of u and to the c but remember a constant times a constant still equals a constant now all we have to do to finish evaluating this integral is rewrite it in terms of x so we're going to take whatever we set u equal to which was 2x plug it back in for u here and here simplify the 2x over 4 simplifies 2x over 2 and you have the integral of sine squared x dx what do you call an ant who lives alone an independent you try Okay, doing the same thing, except this time we want to find the indefinite integral of cosine squared x dx. Now, there is no formula just to give us the integral of cosine squared x dx. There was no special integral like that. But what we can do in order to evaluate this is use one of those pre-cal trig identities. And we remember a half angle identity that tells us cosine squared x is actually equal to one half the quantity, one plus cosine of two x. Now, all we have to do is just evaluate this integral, which is much easier. So we're going to take this one half, which is a constant, move it out front of our integral sign will multiply it on at the end then just like last time we're going to take the integral of each term separately in here but here we have a function within a function anytime that happens when you're integrating you got to use u substitution so we're going to set u equal to our innermost function which is 2x in this case we're going to take the derivative of that with respect to x so the derivative of u with respect to x is du dx the derivative of 2x is just going to be 2 multiply both sides by dx you get du is equal to 2 dx we look at the problem there's a dx but there is no 2 so what we're going to do is divide both sides here by 2 and we get one half du is equal to dx so now we can rewrite this integral in terms of u and du we're going to plug in u for the 2x we're going to plug in one half du for the dx all we have to do now is evaluate this integral to do that we need to prepare it for integration so we're going to take this one half move it out front of the integral sign to multiply with the other one half that's out there we're going to integrate each term separately like we did last time the integral of one du is going to be u plus c the integral of cosine of u du is going to be sine of u plus c the c's add together to create one constant of integration and the one half multiply together to create one fourth we then distribute that one fourth to the u to the sine of u and to the c but remember a constant times a constant still equals a constant and then all we have to do to finish this problem is just rewrite this integral in terms of x so we're going to take whatever we set u equal to which is 2x plug it back in for u and then simplify 2x over 4 simplifies 2x over 2 and we have successfully evaluated the integral of cosine squared x dx 
Now, example three says find the indefinite integral. So here we want the integral of secant of x dx. Now, this is the integral of one of your six basic trig functions. So hopefully you have this memorized and this problem is over in three seconds. The integral of secant of x dx should be equal to the natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus tangent of x plus c. But let's say, for instance, you don't remember what this integral is equal to. What you're going to have to do instead is try to evaluate it some other way. So let me show you why the integral of secant of x dx is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus tangent of x plus c. The way we're going to have to do this is we're going to have to multiply this function in here, secant of x, by a form of 1 to create some other new function that we can integrate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this function in here by the quantity secant x plus tangent of x over secant of x plus tangent of x. Now, if you notice, these are the same thing, meaning this is a form of 1. So I'm multiplying secant of x by a form of 1, thereby not actually changing the function itself. I do this because what happens is I'm able to then distribute the secant x to each term in the numerator, the secant x and the tan x. So I end up getting something that looks like this. Now, why would I do that? Well, because what I can do now is I can evaluate this indefinite integral of a rational function where there's a function in the numerator and denominator by using u substitution. I can set u equal to whichever function, if I were to take the derivative of it, would give me the other function. In this case, that would be the denominator. If I set u equal to secant x tan x, the derivative derivative of this with respect to x over here is going to give you du dx. Over here, the derivative of secant of x is secant x tan x. The derivative of tangent of x is going to be secant squared x. Multiply both sides by dx and I get du is equal to secant x tan x plus secant squared x dx. And look, that's exactly what's in my numerator over here. So what I can do is rewrite this integral in terms of u and du. I'm going to substitute u in for secant x plus tan x. I'm going to substitute du in for secant x tan x plus secant squared x dx. And I get my new integral in terms of u and du is just the integral of 1 over u du. And the integral of that we know is the natural log of the absolute value of u plus c. So now all I have to do to finish evaluating this integral is just take whatever I set u equal to, which was secant x plus tan x, plug it back in for u, and I have what my integral of secant of x dx is equal to. And that's the exact thing that we said it was equal to at the beginning of the problem. What do you call an ant who doesn't make any money? A peasant! You try! So here, we are taking the indefinite integral of x squared cotangent of 1 minus x cubed dx. Now we have a function within a function being multiplied to another function. So clearly, anytime that occurs, you want to try to use u substitution in order to integrate this. So what are we going to set u equal to? Well, usually we set u equal to our innermost function. But in this case, we have multiple functions here. So we want to set u equal to whichever function, if we were to take the derivative of it, would give us another function in here. So we're going to set u equal to 1 minus x cubed. The reason is because if I take the derivative of this with respect to x, I get du dx is equal to 0 minus 3x squared. I then multiply both sides by dx, I get du is equal to negative 3x squared dx. And that's awesome because in the integral up here, we have an x squared and we have a dx. That's why we set u equal to 1 minus x cubed because we're going to be able to take care of that with our du. The only issue is there is no negative 3. So when that occurs, you're going to have to divide that constant to the other side of the equation and we get negative 1 third du is equal to x squared dx. So now we can completely rewrite this integral up here in terms of u and du. We could substitute u in for 1 minus x cubed. We could substitute negative 1 third du in for x squared dx. Now all we have to do is evaluate this integral. So how do we do that? Well, we prepare it for integration. We take this negative 1 third, which is a constant, move it out front of our integral sign. We can then integrate cotangent of u du. And this time, hopefully we don't have to do any crazy substitutions in here because you have memorized that the integral of cotangent of u du is equal to the natural log of the absolute value of sine of u plus c. Now all we have to do to finish evaluating this integral is take whatever we set u equal to, which is 1 minus x cubed, plug it back in for u, and you have evaluated this indefinite integral up here. Perfect. Now, example four, we want to evaluate the definite integral. So this time, we no longer have an indefinite integral. We have a definite integral because we're given limits of integration. So we're going to have to evaluate this using the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now, the first step in the fundamental theorem of calculus is to find the antiderivative of our function in here. But the square root of 1 plus tan squared x, that seems pretty complicated to find the antiderivative of. Well, is there anything we can substitute in? Any identities we know here? Yeah, we know that 1 plus tan squared x is actually 
actually equal to secant squared x. And that helps us out a lot because we're taking the square root now of secant squared x. And the square root and the square just cancel each other out. And this is clearly much easier to take the integral of than this. So now all we have to do is just evaluate this integral right here. Again, we're using the fundamental theorem of calculus. The first step is to find the antiderivative of our function. And we know now, we don't have to do any crazy proofs. We know that the integral of secant x dx is going to be equal to the natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus tangent of x plus c. Now, since we're doing the fundamental theorem of calculus, we don't need to include c because it cancels out during the process. Now, how do we use the fundamental theorem of calculus in order to evaluate this? Since we took our antiderivative of secant of x, now all we have to do is take our upper limit of integration, plug it in for x here and here, and subtract when we take our lower limit of integration, 0, and plug it in for x here and here. We then plug all of this into our calculator, and we get that the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of the square root of 1 plus tan squared x dx is approximately equal to 0.881. Again, always round to three decimal places, your nearest thousandth, when you're answering a question with a calculator on the AP test. Now example 5 says find the average value of f of x is equal to tan x on the interval from 0 to pi over 4. So average value, we know a formula for that, right? The average value of a function is equal to 1 over b minus a times the integral from a to b of f of x dx, where a and b are the endpoints of our interval, so a is going to be 0 in this case, b is going to be pi over 4. f of x is going to be our function tan x. So we plug all that in, we simplify over here, 1 over pi over 4 minus 0 is the same as 1 over pi over 4, which is the same as 1 divided by pi over 4, which is the same as 1 times the reciprocal of that, which is 4 over pi. So we get 4 over pi out front times the integral from 0 to pi over 4 of tan x dx. Now all we have to do to find the average value of this function on this given interval is just evaluate this integral and multiply it by 4 over pi. So how do we evaluate this integral? Well, it's a definite integral, so we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus. The fundamental theorem of calculus says we got to take the antiderivative of this function in here first, then we'll evaluate it using these limits of integration. So how do we take the antiderivative of tan x. Well, we know how to do that now without doing any crazy substitutions. We know from our chart earlier that the integral of tan x dx is going to be equal to the negative natural log of the absolute value of cosine of x plus c, or the natural log of the absolute value of secant of x plus c. So I'm going to use the negative natural log of the absolute value of cosine of x plus c. But since we're going to use the fundamental theorem of calculus, we don't need to include c because it'll cancel out during the process. Now, how do I use the fundamental theorem of calculus here? Well, I'm going to take my upper limit of integration, pi over 4, plug it in for x. Then I'm going to subtract when I take my lower limit of integration, 0, and plug it in for x. Then all you have to do is plug all of this into your calculator, and you get that the average value of this function on this given interval is approximately equal to 0. 0.441, again, rounding to three decimal places, the nearest thousand. Because any question where you have to use a calculator on the AP test requires you to round to three decimal places.